Hello there and welcome back to AD Craft. For you today I've got an awesome base expansion with some crazy builds, big improvements to the storage system, more terraforming and more farms. So don't go anywhere. But first, the elephant in the room, or should I say the amethystine. I planted this in a bell jar last episode and I cannot help but notice that it's grown significantly. And what's more, it seems to be giving off some weird energy. So not wanting to miss an opportunity, I want to have harness its power for some of the future builds. It's free real estate. So time to get going with a little upgrade. So I've got some materials together now to connect this up. A little bit of electrical engineering later and that's now done so i've added some capacitors into the tree and that's taking some of the power through these cables firstly over to this generator over here to turn this into some storable energy and takes that underground and then we've got another one over here and this is the one that's probably going to be used first of all to pump some of the power through to this new area so we're going to build out this canal around this corner and add our new buildings just over here so it's time to clear out my makeshift chorus farm and start digging out some of this land. And the best way to do that is with a time lapse. And so all the digging is now done in this area. And now I need to head back over to the storage in there to pick up a whole bunch of the different stone variants and the various other blocks in order to lay the foundations ready for the canal itself, which the water just stops here at the moment. And also the builds that are gonna go here. And we've got some really interesting builds going on uh, in the future. So let's go and get that done. A few moments later. And with a whole bunch of resources now in these shulker boxes and in my inventory, I am ready to start filling this in. And this is probably going to take a little while. So it's time for another time lapse. I've now filled all of the docks and the walkways in. There's a couple of little gaps going on for some various things that I'm going to add in later on and also the flooring for some of these buildings. But the main thing that you'll notice is this big gap here. And this is gonna be the next bridge. So in a little bit, I am going to collect some resources and get that done. You've had enough time lapses. So I'll just show you what it's like when it's finished and do a little bit of the decoration around these areas. But now it's time for sleep. And following a good night's rest, I've now finished this bridge. It's pretty simple. It's following the similar design that we used over here, but this one is obviously on a bit of a slope. And so this will now make it so much easier for us to come between this, our main storage building, and the new area and everything that's gonna go on up here. So I'm pleased with how this has turned out. And you'll also see that I've now filled in all of the water here, just going through with a bucket and I've missed a little bit here somehow. Um, those are always a bit of a pain when they don't just quite spread. But I need to go and get my bucket and fill that in and then on to the next thing. And that is an expansion to this storage system. So I've already filled up all of these automated bins and I've got a whole bunch of resources just sitting randomly in these chests that I'm not too pleased about and I'd rather get at least some of them, the ones that are kind of all over the place, into their own rightful spots. And to do that, I'm going to start digging out behind this area towards where we've just done the canal and basically clear out a big hole to fill with a bunch more storage. This has been dug out now and all of my tools have been fixed up as well using the clerics over in the temple area. Next thing I need to do is add in some walls and some flooring just to give me the basic outline to build in. Then I need to take this stuff out and start building in the rest of the storage system which is going to be coming along and round because it's going to be two levels on this particular section. So yeah, time to get going on the walls. The walls, floor and ceiling are mostly in. There's a couple of little gaps these are going to be some machines that are going to link through to the surface and this wall is going to be copper as is this section under here so I need to get over to the aging facility grab some of that copper and wax it all up 
but it's given me the basis now so that I can start thinking about putting in the main bits of the machinery before adding the decoration around. So that's going to be the next thing, clearing this out and building up the storage system. And a long, long time later, all of the extra storage bays are now in place and I've added in the water stream. The hole was here and connected up to this section here. So it now diverts all the way around, connects up to this extra section right the way around the top and then connects in where it started, goes back and forth, back along the bottom here. And then we did have the overflow at this end, but now it just carries on and overflows just in the corner here, as we can see. So that's where all of the leftover items are gonna be that can then be sorted into some of these chests and these ones as well. And I've just emptied everything out of the chests that I had and dumped them in here. So that's gonna be a big job later on, probably one for off camera. But I have started some of the decoration. I need to finish this now. The other thing that I've got is this little area here, which given that I spend so much time in here, I wanted to make this more homely. So using a similar theme to what we've got in the submarine, and I'm gonna add in some further decoration here, just to, like I say, give myself a bit of a base in the storage system and yeah now i have to do the decoration that is probably going to take a long time as well so wish me luck two thousand years later and although i am now exhausted the decoration in the new section of the storage area is complete so the first thing you'll notice is that this slime pipe now comes into this reservoir to give some slime supply downstairs and this then comes out of here through these underground tubes into this machine here and through into this furnace which has got a lovely blue flame then down here we've got the nice relaxing base area where we can stare out into the canal from underwater and also things like the grandfather clock and just some nice seating so we've also got some hidden lighting coming through underneath these honey block lights and i've just put some of the item frames in ready to go but I still haven't set any of the filters, so nothing in these yet. But I'm really pleased how this looks. We've got the bed here, which is a nice central location for whenever I do need to sleep. And yeah, this makes this whole area look a lot, lot more useful. And it gives me an extra 36 bays here as well for all the storage that I could possibly want. Now, whilst having a seat in the new area, it's time to talk about grinding resources. As some of the people in the comments have said that they would like to see a little bit more of the resource grind. However, a lot of the resources that I actually get are based on some of the farms that I've built. With things like cobblestone, smooth stone and basalt coming from the farms that I have in my storage area. An absolutely amazing tree farm that works on just about every variety of trees apart from mangrove. An iron farm that's been going since the very first episode. Villages that I can get things like bricks, stone, glass, decorations like bookshelves and other things from. And an amazing piglin bartering setup that's fed from my gold farm. Not to mention the frog light farm, the guardian farm, and the most amazing copper farm in the end. But there's always one resource that is an absolute nightmare to get hold of. It really is terrible. And that is all of the huge amounts of deep slate that I go through in these builds. And it is just really miserable every time I have to go down to the mines, even with a beacon to try and get hold of this. However, I saw the other day an amazing new machine from a YouTuber called Balkan. And this is a tunnel boring machine that can be used to then blow up the deep slate and just collect it. And this is gonna revolutionize things. But I need to get myself some more ancient debris in order to get this built. And the next stage of that is in these boxes. So I have crafted up a whole bunch of TNT here. I have also got, as you can see in my inventory, a potion of fire resistance and an entire crate full. So I came to the bartering setup, got these ones and just basically added some redstone to increase the time. So I am now good to go. I need to collect these up and find myself somewhere that is going to be suitable. A short elytra flight later. I'm digging out some tunnels ready to place some TNT and I've already just through this uncovered the first of the ancient debris. So let's see if there's any more around here. There is. Fantastic. Uh, so that looks like it is two down. Just blast out some more space around here. No, nope, that's it. Two down. I only really need four, but let's see how many I can get. And from the first explosions, I have got, by the looks of it, at least another three 
ancient debris so only a few more to go but I might just carry on And for this absolutely epic tunnel, I managed to get myself 16 more ancient debris. And all in all, that gives me 42, which is far more than the six that I actually needed. So I've got a nice supply in case I need to put some netherite on anything or replace any tools. Now I've brought all of the debris and all of the other redstone components that I'm going to need down to deep slate level. So we're minus 32 at this point. I want it to go above where the lava is going to form for doing this. And I've had to dig out a lovely big area and this even on its own, even with a beacon was painful. So I'm super, super excited to get this built. This is where the machine is gonna go. So now it's time for me to get building. The machine's now complete. Hopefully the TNT dupers are all fine. This should have all the right kind of pistons. So we've got sticky piston here, here, and these two sides, which are the bits that pull things along. And fingers crossed, if I just hit this, brilliant. Now I just run around and collect all of the deep slate. Perfect. A little bit of blasting later. I love using this thing. And as you can see, I have been using it a fair bit. And in this time, I've not only got an inventory full of cobble deep slate, but I've got no fewer than eight shulker boxes that I've managed to fill up. So this will keep me going for quite some time. Also some other bits and pieces because of the tough and various other ores and diamonds and things that you get from this. I did have one slight issue with this, which was um, firstly, I came into a cave, so I've had to patch that up. But also when you are blasting, if you do use this, and again, check the link in the description to see how to build this. If you do have gravel that falls, sometimes you can blow up a block and then have the gravel that falls, which will then mean that if you do start the machine again, this will hit its push limit and will not move forward, which can then cause the TNT to glitch out and blow up the whole thing. So I did have that once, have had to rebuild this, but luckily it doesn't take very long to rebuild at all. So it's an absolutely fantastic machine. And you can also do a four TNT duper version of this, which all sets off at the same time. So it doesn't blow up any of the items that you get dropped. So yeah, really, really enjoying this. Did also try to set myself up a another portal in order to link this section up, but it was too close to the nether portals that I have already in the base, um, in the village rather. And because of that, it wouldn't link up correctly because of the vertical distance. So hopefully soon I will have got far enough away to be able to do a nether portal and link this up to the nether roof with everything else. But now I've got to take these items back to the storage system and get them all loaded into that. After some chest emptying, all the deep slate and the other blocks are now in the storage system. As you can see, I've got plenty in reserve to go alongside all of the other resources that I've got. Uh, I do need some more dirt and some more grass at some point and a little bit more sand, although I have got plenty of red sand, so that's all good. But I've done a whole bunch of cleaning in here as well and cleared out those chests that I dumped the stuff off in and finished filling up the storage system so all the miscellaneous items are in these chests and these ones down here and I've put some things in the filters upstairs we've got all of the wools so it's nice and colorful around here with a couple of the other blocks that I have lots of um, just down here as well it does mean that I've got eight bays still ready to fill up with whatever I fancy before we get down to this overflow so really really pleased with that and now that's all done everything is in the right place to start collecting for the builds upstairs. A little bit of crafting later. I've gathered up all the resources that I'm gonna need in all of these shulker boxes along here, ready to go. And now it's time for a bit of a building time-lapse. The first of the new builds in this area is now complete and I love how this looks. I've also done a little bit of decoration and added some things like this ice and these honey lights down the sides and a bit of amethyst down the other side. And this connects up to the storage bu building using this honey pipe here. 
So if we have a look inside, we go upstairs first of all. There's just some decorative elements, a couple of machines here, the honey being pumped through into the big chimney units. And then coming down here, you've got this big tank on the side and also this slime pipe coming up from underneath. But here we have the functional bit of this build. This is an automatic Propagule farm. By using some of the mechanics designed by Il Mango, I have created my own take on this. You put the bone meal in here. There's actually a skulk sensor in the back that registers the sound change. And then once the propagule has grown, the pistons will fire and the propagules will come down here. So this is a fully automatic farm to give me all of the propagules that I'll need for building any new mangrove trees. Or should I say growing any mangrove trees. So yeah, really, really pleased how this goes. It's not the most efficient machine, but given what it needs to do, which is provide a reasonable number of these propagules, I think it does the trick. And here we have a connection down to the base as well if we drop down here so this just takes us out in the back of the storage area and into our little sleeping area so there's some quick speedy access through these different mechanisms brings us back up here and we can come out on the dock side and over in this section here is where the next build is going to go and this one's going to be a little bit special because it's going to span these two sides I'm going to collect up some materials and then get building. I've tidied up the cliff side here and got all of the things that I need to start this build in my inventory with the rest of them being over here in my lovely chest monster. It's only temporary though, so it'll go back into the storage soon. However, now it's time to get this next structure built and I think it's time because you guys seem to love them so much for another building time lapse. The next build in this area is now done. We've got this awesome tower and factory with this water wheel and this really, really cool steampunk windmill. So let's check out the details inside if I head over here and uh, get away from these dudes who've been watching me intently. We've got some of this awesome blue flame going on in here with some machinery going up to the ceiling. Down here, we've got the workings of the water wheel, which connects up to the windmill up the top. And if we go right the way up first and foremost to the top level, we've got this cool machinery going on here with some redstone and some copper right the way in the top. And this is gonna be some nice views to the area that we're gonna expand onto. And you can just get a lovely view of the actual roof uh, and the chimneys. I really like the chimneys from the previous build that I just did on that really, really industrial. But that's not all that's going on here, as with the other builds in the area, if we come down here, there is a functional element, and this is a glow lichen farm. It's a really, really simple design. What you do is you take your shears and you shear this, and then it uses the double pulse from the observer to pull the observer down to power the bone meal. So you do that and you just get an endless supply of glow lichen. But then again, if we come across here, we can see these guys still, still lurking around. And there's one more thing that needs to be done in this area, not including killing off these raiders. Uh, and that is this water wheel at the moment is sitting out of the water. So we need something in this area that is gonna allow us to power the water wheel so that we can use both the wind and some water power. So that's gonna be the next thing, which is gonna be just over here. And if I spin round like this, and as you can see, we now have a solution to the water problem. So we've got this brand new flask that sits up here, filled with water and is feeding down into this channel in order to power our water wheel. So this finishes off the story for this. We've got the ability to power this from the wind and also from the water to make sure that we can always get this machinery powered. And this sits on this gantry and is held up here. And if we head across to the other side, from this side, we can see that we've got this little tap that takes the water out of this jar. And we've got the little bung in the top, but we've also got the different colors of stained glass coming into this, just to give it a little bit more interest 
so it's not just all one plain color. I'm really, really pleased with how this has turned out. We've also got a lovely little crane going on, much, much like the crane that we've got just around the corner there, in order to be able to pick stuff up from this side of the dock and bring it up here, because obviously we've got a slightly higher section here. So I really like how this has all turned out with the different levels as well. So it's not just all on one level, as quite a lot of the builds are here, but it's adding a bit more vertical height. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Also, if there's any farms that you'd like to see as well, always like to hear about those. But all that's left to be said from me is hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you all next time on AD Craft.